Hello everybody, this is Ben at Dash 9 Computing, and um, today uh, we're going to do a little thing where we're going to get these two to talk to each other. This is an ESP32, and it's got a little TFT screen on it, and this is an ESP8266, uh, kind of the predecessor to this one, and I want them to talk to each other, and what we're going to set up is this guy is going to, the ESP32 is going to sort of be the, the manager. Uh, and then this ESP8266 will be the member. So this will tell, send commands to this ESP8266. You can make it go the other way. Um, there's a lot of different scenarios. Um, I, uh, with this code, well, I guess I can just sort of show you what it does. That might be a, just a jump right into it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> it's pretty cool, really. Here it is. So it boots up and I threw a little splash screen. We're gonna use the ESP now protocol. And what it's doing right now is it's initializing it. And you'll notice it said found eight devices. It's basically just looking for access points. Um, the way the code is written, if an access point starts with the word slave, it will say, that um, it knows that it is an ESP and it's running the ESP now protocol and it will try to connect. So now that that's plugged in, what we're going to do is we're going to plug this in. And um, at first, the red LED will come on, which is, I believe, I'm just going to set this down. Okay, zoop, uh, which will be this one. And then I'm sending a command to also turn on the blue light after it's connected. And it'll also, in the serial, uh, port show uh, an incrementing ser uh, number, which we will um, take a look at after this. But just for now, to kind of show you it, sometimes it requires a reset after powering on, but there it is. Um, this is scrolled off the bottom of the screen. So oh, I'm going to restart, but see it turned on the blue light. Uh, and it's not turning it off because the code isn't going to execute, but let's, I just want to show you that it finds it. Okay, there it is. It found that one. See that first one in the blue light now is blinking? because I'm having it send an on off. But uh, if you see here, it says found slave and that's the Mac address. So uh, that's kind of a good proof of concept. And now why would you ever wanna turn a light on remotely? Well, let's say you've got six or eight of these in the basement with moisture sensors on them and one of them just stops working. Well, you know, sometimes it's hard to figure out which one's which and maybe you didn't label them. Wouldn't it be nice to just execute a piece of code that says, hey, turn the blue light on on this one. That way I can just walk up and find it. And I know that's very useful for when I go into like a server room or a rack of servers. Say you got a dozen of them and you're like, oh, I need to pull one of them. You know, where is it? Which one is it? And, you know, you try to label things, but sometimes I don't trust labels or sometimes you're in the back where the power cords are. It's very dark and there's cords everywhere. You just want to really have a light on. Um, or say someone's in a remote data center and you're asking them, hey, can you um, pull the power on this one? You can remotely turn on that little LED on the front and back and then say it's in, you know, go ahead and do it. It, it just, it removes, I think, the chances for, you know, making a mistake. Now this is um, directional, meaning we're sending from the ESP32 to this ESP8266. But um, what you can do also is you can have it talk back. So let's say there was a moisture sensor on here. You can say, hey, uh, you know, um, I've detected moisture or not and send back. And if you have a larger TFT display, you know, say you have four or five of these, you could have 20 of them if you wanted. And you could sort of short of, uh, <laughs> you could show the status of that. And that would be handy for, you know, temperature sensors and all these different things, have it feedback and you can kind of create your own you know, basically a thermostat slash sensing console. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. That'd be pretty cool. And, um, you know, have it you know, mounted to the wall, look nice. Or um, also you could have it, um, you know, use a web-based app because these will run little web servers if you want, easy enough to do. And uh, you could do things like turn on lights through the web app. And yeah, I mean, there's really a lot of room for growth because these two talk to each other and they're using this ESP now protocol. And just to kind of explain it, it, this, these are not on my home network. They are using their ethernet, their wireless ethernet, uh, 
I guess that's kind of a weird way to put it. They're just using their wireless card, no ethernet, using the wireless card and they're talking to each other over wireless. This one comes up as an access point. As I showed on this list, it's an access point. So it's broadcasting itself saying, hey, I'm an access point. And I'll show you um, on my phone, for example, that you can see it, that this, this is broadcasting. So that's how it's finding it. it. It's very clever. You don't need to have a network at all. Say you're somewhere that you, know, you may need some proximity. Um, this one does, however, have a spot for an extra antenna. And that's where that may come in handy if you have it in a basement and say this is on a second floor. You know, you may not have the best connectivity at 2.4 gigahertz. So that's a, there's a lot of flexibility here. Yeah, let's take a little look at what it looks like on the phone and we'll also look at like the serial output. It's, it's pretty slick. Okay, so here I am on my phone and you can see I'm gonna tap Wi-Fi and Indigo is my home network, but when we look into the My Networks, notice how it says slave colon A4CF. In the code, it's saying append the word slave in front of the MAC address. I, I don't love this master-slave terminology and relationship. It's, uh, unfortunately, that's how the protocol does it. Um, we could change this because this is just any bit of text. We could make it anything we want. However, in the uh, libraries, that's what it's called. Um, I guess the libraries could be rewritten too. I'm just not a big fan of that terminology. It's not great. So, but um, I mean, I'm just going to tap and see if we can connect to it. I think we can. Uh, not that we would get much out of it, but there we go. So we've connected, we've connected to the access point, but just wanted to show no internet connection, which is normal. Remember, it's not connected to my Wi-Fi, it's its own Wi-Fi access point, its own AP. Alrighty, so here we are, um, and this is for the ESP32 sending uh, code, and uh, this was originally found uh, here, there's a little link, um, I found it uh, with Arvind Ravularvaru, wrote it, and um, I made a couple small changes to it to work for my device, to print to the screen, and to have them talk. Uh, minimal stuff, very minimal, it's, it's mostly their code. Um, and um, I guess maybe we won't go through the code too much. I'll just show that there's uh, this ESP now protocol is being called. Uh, oh, so ESP now add appear and different things like that. Um, I'll post the code so you can check it out. It's, it's pretty slick. Um, what I did want to show down here is in the serial monitor Right now you can see it's kind of going through this cycle, found nine devices, 10 devices. Um, it's saying this, uh, let's, let's reboot it because I can tell it's seeing something. It's showing things that aren't actually there still. <laughs> so I just power cycled it. And let's go down to the very bottom. Oh, that's part of why we're seeing all that. Let's just clear this all together. That's why I was seeing that. Okay, so it's seeing my Indigo, Fios, some other networks, no slaves found. Now I'm going to plug in the ESP to 8266 and we're going to go to the bottom here and oh, one slave found and it's processing. So it found it. Here's the MAC address and it's, it found the device and it's sending packet two, it's sending a, or number three. So that's working. So now if we hop over to uh, the device here, I'm going to reset it. So here it is, it um, starts off ESP now basic, uh, an example. It says it's an AP config is successful and it's broadcasting. So this is what it's broadcasting. And the um, ESP32 sender is looking for anything that starts with the word slave. And this is the 8266 we're on right now. So here it is, it's a it's MAC address. It says it's successful and, oh, and here it is. Last packet received, data eight, nine, six, oh, we're up to 16. Oh, there goes 17, and I can confirm the blue light is blinking as well. We're just sending both, just to you know show that it's working. Um, yeah, a very handy way to kind of have them talk to each other. The code on the receiver is small right now, just because it's not really doing a whole heck of a lot. You know, it just kind of here's the LED turning on, uh, enabling the LED, and sending some information. And here's where it actually says. Um, Here's where the LED, you know, goes on and off. And here's where it says, you know, oh, printing the data, the data it receives, that's the number. Or, or is it the string? Sorry. 
Yeah, no, that's the actual data. That's the number, and it increments it by one each time it's sent. That's that's it. Uh, but very, very handy, cool, cool stuff.